this is a seven hour draw and paint reduced down to 13 minutes. Lucky you, not so lucky me, but that's okay. I really enjoyed making this. So this is also my first time to use my new camcorder. Ooh, it makes wonderful videos, which also has forced me to use Final Cut Pro, and that's why it's taking me forever to edit. Please understand if the editing is weird this time because I am just learning. Okay, so how did I paint this and what am I going to tell you? I'm going to give you some artist tips on how I painted this, the color mixing, some of the problems I had, how easy it is actually to paint leopard spots because there is a little bit of a pattern there and I will point that out for you. And I will tell you a little bit about the colors. Okay, so for this painting, I am using eight colors. I use some interesting brushes too. And one brush that I am pointing out right now is the flat angle. This thing is a dream to paint with. It has a very sharp angle. I can do a lot of fine detail work with that. And yet I can still get a swath of color when I use the side of it. Right now I am using the Burnt Sienna and I'm blocking in the most iconic part of the fur. And that is on the flank where the fur is kind of patterned like cat footprints and dog footprints. Very unique. Just blocking in the area. The leg that I'm doing right now is very different. The leg actually has three parts to the pattern. The top part is kind of a random spottedness. It's quite dense with the spots. In the middle part of the leg, that's going to have like tiger stripes. And at the lower part, the spots kind of become diffused and smaller. They're widely spaced apart and much lighter. And I will certainly point that out to you when I am painting that. You will be surprised. Okay, I'm continuing with blocking in those base colors. This is a yellow ochre. I was using the Burnt Sienna earlier. And now I am using the Ivory Yellow and Titanium White mix to kind of reclaim some of those areas that I had painted over. But even though I painted over them, you can still see the pencil marks underneath, just a little bit, which is good because I will be painting the specific spots later, and I still need to follow a general guide. I don't have to paint exactly, and I didn't paint exactly, but to follow that guide was really helpful. Okay, now for the fun stuff. You'll notice that I am using a blue black. I'm not using straight black. The reason I'm using blue black is I can later, if I need to hype the contrast even more, I can put a neat black on top and that would bring out some deeper contrast for some areas. But if I do only black right now, then I have no alternative to go darker. And the same philosophy goes when you're using, ti using titanium white. If you use straight titanium white, you can never get a lighter color. So you should always mix a little bit. Well, not always, but maybe frequently, usually. Anyway, you can start seeing the patterns here. On the neck, you can clearly see that some of those uh, spots are linear. Not exactly, but you can tell that they are in a line. When you get to the face, they're a little bit more spread out. And they kind of fan out. They don't just spread out. They, they start in kind of the center and fan out from the center line. Those ears are very unique. If you look closely, they are very much like Siberian tiger ears. The Siberian tiger, the back of their ears are black with a white swath of color on them. And this is what the leopard is looking like also. They're clearly cousins. Probably, yeah, they're, they're definitely cousins. 
Now the spots on the face are getting much smaller and very close together. I looked on the faces of several leopards and some of the leopards have very light spots and others have dark. And then of course there's the clouded leopard. There are many kinds of leopards. So I think there's uh, different, not species, but variations within the species. So because my contrast between the background and the leopard is not that great, I decided to add a little bit of a black line. Now this is not a continuous line. It is a fragmented line, just like you would have a spot here and a spot there. That's what the black line is kind of reminiscent of. And the same goes for this line that's going up the flank and separating the flank from that shoulder muscle. And later I will put a little bit of shadow on the flank so that it's even clearer. And I'm just outlining where that shadow is going to be right now. Okay, it's time to add a little bit of color. We've got the black and the white concept down. So now we're going to add the color. And this particular color is yellow ochre. I added a little bit of color and then I got my paintbrush damp and I spread the color before it dried. You will see that some of these yellows are a little bit bright. I'm using a permanent yellow light in some areas and I don't like quite how light the color did get, but don't worry, it gets changed. It gets changed, this is just a base. I do have this Dollar Store Cheapy makeup brush, which I love and I would highly recommend having one. Mops are very expensive, but finding a good dollar store cheapy is going to be a little bit tricky. I have bought and I have bought and I have bought several. And this particular one and one other one I really like because they don't shed. It's pretty bad when you're painting a picture and you have to constantly dig hair out of it or you paint a picture and when you're going to sell it or give it to somebody or whatever, hang it on your wall, you realize there are four hair right in the middle of it. Not cool. Right now I'm evaluating. Am I finished? Am I finished? No, I was thinking I was and no, I decided I wasn't finished and that I needed to add a little bit more contrast between the background and the tiger. I, I'm sorry, the leopard. Oh. I added a little bit of cobalt, a little bit more cobalt blue to the green mixture and made it kind of a fuzzy background, misty, fuzzy, foggy. And to bring the leopard forward and push the, the background further into the background, I put a little bit of like shadowing around the leopard in certain parts, under the chin, along the ear, along the back. And yes, I think I'm done. I think I'm done. I'm thinking about being done. And yet again, it still doesn't feel right. And I realized what the problem was. My reference photo is very similar to this. And the leopard has two legs with the hint of a third leg. Well, I don't have a hint. So I'm going to have to do something about that. Also my flank and the hip were kind of conjoined and that didn't look right. It made that back leg look like it was sticking out. So I'm fixing that right now. Also that back leg, it's kind of sticking out at a little bit of an odd angle. It's just how I shaded it. I think it's pretty similar to the reference photo, but you know, it's how I shaded mine. So I'm going to have to fix that also. And here I'm just adding a little bit more texture to the flank just to hide, you know, that, that area that I had to correct. And to fix that back leg, I thought I would just add a little bit more white, thicken it a little bit. 
And it looks like I didn't do a whole lot. A little bit later I went and, and thickened it again. I don't think it's on video. And of course if you're going to add a white line you should break that line up with a little bit of local color and that's what I'm doing right now. Here's my reference photo. You can see that I have two legs with a hint of a third leg. And I didn't have that in mind. So I'm thinking, how am I going to put in my third leg? But I can't do the hint like in the reference photo because the muscle on this, on my particular leopard is bulging. And the one in the reference photo had kind of a flattened muscle, which means that it wasn't using that muscle to walk as much. It wasn't leaning into that muscle. Obviously, my leopard is leaning into the muscle. And so I can't have the other front leg or front paw behind it. Be, you know, behind the other, the first, whatever. So I have to think creatively. Where am I going to put that paw? I don't want it stretched out because it's not going to look right stretched out and it stretched behind, it's not going to look right. So I put it as if it's coming under the chin. You know, when the wildcats move, they move with their paw kind of turned in and behind. And then they sling it out in front. And you, you watch the videos. So I had to kind of imitate how it's walking. It's not the best of location, but it's the best I could do. It's either that or have it come out the other side of the jaw and I, ugh, that wasn't gonna work. So here I am putting in some of the final touches, the whiskers, and I can't exactly paint some of those whisker, whiskers easily from the angle I'm at. So I had to turn the, the picture over get a better angle. I am a right-handed person. This makes it easier for me. Touching in very lightly the whiskers. And even though I'm using a dollar store nail brush, I mean, this thing is fine. I like this brush because the ferrule on it is very long. And when I buy kind of like size zero zero at the art store, I just can't find the long threads. So this was pretty good. Well, I think I'm done. And you'll notice that there was a color difference between the blue and this green. That is because this green is actually more realistic and the blue, I don't know why, but I actually film under a fluorescent light and that does alter some of the colors. I really hope you enjoyed this and found something informative. Anyway, if you did, hit the like, subscribe, whatever, and I will see you again.